So listen now, now is the day I got something to say No time to be around the bush I'm cutting to the chase Ain't no peace in my next going on You know just what I mean I found a friend who is the answer to everything before I introduce to you this very special friend I'll tell you what he's done for me if you can comprehend he gave me joy 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 that never fails he fills my life with hope God is good all the time. Shall we join in this song uh, for those who understand Swahili? Uh, those who do not, you can join in whatever languages you understand. Roho mtakatifu Ki ongo zi amini tutu shi kem kono tulio wasafir utupe utupe kusikia sauti ya upole msafiri fuata na ongo zanyu mbani wewe ndi we rafiki Saadaka ribu tu 
si a che sha ka ni na tu ki wa gi za ni u tu pe u tu pe ku si ki a sa u ti ya u po le Safiri fuata na ongo zanyu bani si kuzi tu zakazi ziki wazi me kuisha. Wala hatu na tama ilambingu na sala utupe utupe kusikia sauti ya upole. Safiri fu wata na ongo zanyu mbani. Holy Spirit, faithful guide, ever near the Christian side, hold us gently by the hand, pilgrims in a desert land. Weary souls forever rejoice while we hear that sweet voice. Wanderer, come follow me, I'll guide thee home. When our days of toil shall cease, waiting still for sweet release, may we hear that sobering voice. Wanderer, come follow me, I'll guide thee home. May we respond in the affirmative in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good once again. All the time. This evening, I feel particularly impressed by the Spirit of God to revisit a matter. For those who are listening to this message from the year 1980, WhatsApp is a messaging platform uh, owned by Facebook, which allows users to exchange text messages and voice messages to make voice and video calls, share images and documents, user locations, and other media. Not too long ago, WhatsApp introduced a feature which is called Blue Ticks. <laughs> Blue Ticks will indicate that your message has been received and read. A single gray tick shows that your message has been successfully sent while two gray ticks mean it has been delivered to the phone. Blue ticks. When you go online, there is the proverbial men's conference where the boy child is ever complaining about being blue ticked. <laughs> so this afternoon when my wife sent me a message as I was preparing for the afternoon presentation, I read, but I had not responded, and so she sent me back a message and said, you just blue ticked me. <laughs> and so our sermon title this evening is The Man Who Blue Ticked God. <laughs> the Man Who Blue Ticked God. Like we have said, many young men are disoriented when you send a WhatsApp chat and you are sure it has been read and no response is forthcoming. 
You wait for hours on end and you ask yourself, do I send another one to ask why I have been blue ticked? The man who blue ticked God. Let us pray again. God, this man is the story of our life. Message has been heard and read, but no response. Move in our heart, dear God, to respond appropriately in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was in high school, they taught us certain things called stimuli in the biology class. When I eventually settled for electrical engineering, I bade farewell to biology. But I've always had a love for things uh, scientific. They said stimuli simply is an appropriate response. And therefore, if I put my hand on something hot and then I begin laughing, the biology teacher said that is not stimuli, that is sickness. <laughs> appropriate response. The book of Jonah is an interesting study on God's evangelistic fervor and missionary behavior. It is styled as the greatest missionary book in the Bible and not because of the abilities of the prophet after whom it is named but because of the relentless pursuit of God. Jonah, after all, the book of Jonah begins with a proclamation on judgment in Nineveh. And it ends with God demonstrating grace, favor, and redemption to the city of Nineveh. God appears to me, God's church, to be stuck with a recalcitrant, reluctant, and stubborn preacher called Jonah. Jonah combines ethnic chauvinism with straight-down patriotism, and this man refuses to respond to the promptings of God simply because he holds his nation to be much greater than the nation of the Assyrians. Sometimes I wonder how it is that Jonah got appointed to the ministry with zero evangelistic fervor, without any inclination towards grace and mercy, Jonah finds himself planted within God's great missionary journey in the Old Testament. A prophet with a false sense of patriotism, jingoism, and every other thing apart from love for God and man. But it also appears to me that God is so desperate to achieve his goal of saving Nineveh and of saving Jonah, that he will move even though this man has demonstrated an unwillingness to serve. As I thought about it, I thought about that WhatsApp group that has God in three persons, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and Jonah. The moment a message is sent to Jonah, the next thing you see is Jonah left. Jonah left. He is God's faulty prophet. But he still is God's prophet. And so while his name has speaks to the humbleness of a dove, he does not have the wisdom of serpents. Jonah. While God has invested so much in raising up this prophet, this prophet Jonah continues to operate as though there is no God, there is no mission, there is no purpose. Is there not a cause? And so Jonah, we begin the book with Jonah attempting to run away from God. It's interesting that you know the word of God, there are days I have prayed before I come to this pulpit, I tell you I have prayed for such a long time telling God, God, just give me a word. And yet Jonah is someone who God gave a direct word and yet he disregarded it. 
God gave Jonah a message which did not need an interpreter. But God desired so much to save Nineveh that the, 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 the measure of his desire to save Nineveh was only equal to his desire to save Jonah. And so Jonah was saved in the mix. Jonah represents many of us who God has sent messages and we have blue-ticked Jesus. Sitting down on a message where God is waiting for a response, blue-ticked. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. The Lord in his great patience is willing to start over again with us afresh and anew. Those in the balcony, do not blue-tick Jesus this evening. If you hear the voice of God, respond appropriately. And so in the book of Jonah, the Bible says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Like us to open that portion of scripture, that we may follow together as God speaks to his prophet, and he gives him instruction concerning what he must do as a prophet after God's own heart, who God had intended should be after his own heart. The Bible says in Jonah 1 verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. And that word was clear. It is not the word coming from a governor or a senator. It's not the word coming from the king, but it is a word coming from the Lord of lords and the king of kings. It is not a word coming from your lecturer. It is not a word coming from your neighbor or your friend in your cubicle. It is a word coming from glory. Be careful who you blue tick. God sent a clear word to Jonah, and the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jonah. You could substitute the, words, the word of the Lord and say Jesus came to Jonah. Spoke with him. Because God's nature is revolted by sin. God is troubled when men continue to sin, and he knows he can do something about it. Like a mother pities her tender children, God pities us. And he weeps and he moans. For Nineveh, God had a particular issue and God wanted this matter addressed. But he had a reluctant prophet. The word must go out because when, once the word goes out, the word has power to lift us out of sin. The word must go out because the word in it is the power of God to save. The word will give us victory over sin, victory over the devils, victory over demons, ultimately victory over Satan and his entire confederacy of evil. The word of God has power. The word of God may not have, is not magic. It is power. What you look for in Afro cinema is magic, but what God offers is power. The word of God has potency. The word of God has power to alter the course of your life and to plant you on a higher plane than you have been before. Potency. And God speaks to us as an insider. When the word has come to your heart, you need no further interpretation. God speaks to you as an insider. God listens to the, God speaks to the minister, but when the word comes to your heart, it is precisely on your question. You don't have to again ask, what must I do to be saved? God has made it clear and plain before your sight. In Hebrews 4 verse 12, the Bible says, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. And it is a keen designer of the intents and purposes of the heart. That the word of God will tell you clearly what your heart is about. And we said the human heart is deceitful above all things. Who shall know it? That which shall know it is the word of God. And that is why God sends out his word in mercy. 
In John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. And in Psalm 119, in a variety of verses, 105, he says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 9 to 11, he says, Your word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man keep his way pure, is a question. And he says, by giving heed thereto, according to your word. The word of God is powerful, my, friend, my friends. The word of God is able to make something out of nothing. The Bible says, he declared and it stood fast. There is a time God spoke to nothingness and he told nothingness, let there be light and there was light. There is a time God looked to a mountain and said, mountain, move from one other side and stand on that side. And it stood fast. There is a time God spoke to the waters and he said, let there be a separation between the waters above and the waters beneath. And they did so. There is nothing too hard for Jesus. The word of God has power. The word of God is alive and active. And as I speak now, it's, it, is, it is piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrows, and it is keenly discerning the intents and purposes of your heart. Jonah, do not blue tick Jesus. And so the word of God comes and the word of God has specific action points. Bible says, now when the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, arise. Action. Arise, do something. The word of God comes with responsibility. The word of God does not come to comfort us in sin, but to, to conquer sin and to comfort the saints. Arise. Move away from fraternizing with sin and evil. Move away from a life of low living and come to victory in Christ Jesus. Arise. When there's too much adultery, the word of God says, thou shall not commit adultery. That's the word of God. Arise. When there's too much lying and sinning, the word of God comes and says, thou shall not bear false witness. When there's too much stealing around campus, the word of God comes to say, thou shall not steal. When people break the Lord's holy Sabbath, the word says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In six days thou shalt labor and do all thine work, but the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord. Neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant shall do any work in it. For in six days the word spoke. In six days the Lord fashioned the world, but on the seventh, he rested. When the word of God comes, it is to remove us from a life of fraternizing with sin. It is to remove us from what now the world calls alternative, alternate lifestyles. Homosexuality and all the things in its wake. The word will come and say, the Lord hates those who will do unnatural acts. In Romans chapter 1, you'll find an accurate record of the things God hates. So when the word comes, it is to, for us to arise. Jonah, don't blue tick Jesus. Arise. Cry against the wickedness happening in the world today. Cry against the things of the devil and turn your eyes upon Jesus. In Proverbs 4, the Bible says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. And once the word of God comes, my brothers and my sisters, it is our responsibility to respond at the earliest opportunity. Do not defer obedience. Do not look to tomorrow which you do not know about. Dear friends, he lights the evening star. He paints the wayside flower. The winds and waves obey him, and by him the birds are fed. Much more to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from the Father above. Jesus expects nothing but obedience. Jesus expects that when he downloads a message on your phone, you will respond immediately and appropriately. That is what Jesus expects. But the Bible says when the word came to this man called Jonah, 
and modern day Jonas listening to the preacher today in verse 3, it says, but, that word. Every time God speaks, you hear that but coming from a young person. You know, God gives a message saying, Maxwell, I want you to stand up for truth. And you say, but, but God, can't you see? But God, can't you see? I've just begun a life in the university. I want to enjoy life first. But God, can't you see? But, that word. Every time God sends a message, what he receives from your heart is an echo, noise, interference, distortion. But, God says, my friend, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You say, God, but, you know, in my village. But, is the word of God clear? If it is clear, follow it. But, and so the Bible says, what came out of the mouth of this man called Jonah is a but. And many of us find ourselves like Jonah after we have negated the word of God, we rise up but to go in the opposite direction. When God has said, walk away from wickedness, we, we blue tick Jesus, but then we go back into wickedness. Modern day Jonah listened to the voice of the preacher, God will not suffer disobedience for long. Men, Ellen White says, and I have to quote this today, there is a limit to the forbearance of Jehovah. There is a point beyond which men will not pass in peace. There is a point, there's a line drawn in the sand. He says, this far and no farther. You will run, but you cannot hide, my friend. The arms of divinity will, will stretch and will pluck you out of your rat hole. And Jesus will look at you in the face and say, where do you think you're going? He owns the world. And so, as Jonah begins his way of escape, and be careful when you try to run away from Jesus and you still run on his world. Be careful when you try to run away from Jesus, but you still run with his feet. Be careful when you run away from Jesus, but the breath is still the Lord's. Be careful. Don't use the Lord's items to mock the Lord. Don't use the success God has given you to mock Jesus. If you cannot be humble just with a single degree, how will the Lord trust with two degrees? If now the only certificate you have is KCSE and you have become too clever for Jesus. The only document you have is KCP and you are behaving like you have fashioned the entire world. Be humble. Be humble with Jesus. Do not turn the blessings of God into a curse. Just because God has given you shoes to wear, you use those shoes to walk away from his presence. Be careful. And so Jonah began running away from the presence of God. And the Bible says in verse 3, But Jonah arose but not in the direction the Lord has in, had instructed. He arose to flee, to Tashish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, the Bible says, and he found a ship going to Tashish. So he paid the fare and went down into it. And the path away from Jesus is a descendancy. Every time you move away from the presence of God, your life is on the downward spiral. There is no life that ever succeeds that has mocked God. If you deny the voice of Jesus, I tell you for free, your life will be on a downward spiral and it will be down to Joppa, down to the bottom of the ship, and ultimately you'll find yourself in the dwelling place of the amphibians and the fishes. You will find yourself in places where you had never imagined you'd find yourself. You will move away from that first class student to a second class upper to a second class lower. And before you realize it, you are fighting to graduate. You will find yourself battling supplementaries and battling resets in campus and looking like you are hollow. The walking away from Jesus is a downward spiral. No one walks away from Jesus and lives the same. No one comes to Jesus and stays the same. If you come to Jesus, he will transform you. If you walk away from Jesus, you will destroy yourself. 
Jonah, the Bible says he went down to Joppa. He went down into the ship. And modern day Jonas, if you don't listen to the voice of God, and this I say with tears in my heart, you are headed down and down and down. Your value, your stock will keep, will keep falling. And as we look at you, even men in the world will say, this has become too cheap. Even those who now love you will look and say, this lady has become too cheap. It is a downward spiral as we move away from Jesus. Even the ladies who now are cheering you on, they will say, when I finally want to settle, I won't settle with this one. It is a downward spiral. Even all those, your classmates, who now are, are priming you up and saying you are the hero. When you begin to, and, and my friends, when God leaves you to your own devices. When God leaves you to reap the fruit of disobedience. When God leaves you, my brother. You know. I cannot tell if you have gone too far, but I can tell if you are going too far. We can look at the general trajectory of life. We can see how you have mapped the course of your life. We can tell that this life lived as it is will be destructive to itself. In obedience, we rise. In disobedience, we go down. In obedience, we rise. Moving away from second lower and beginning to be a second upper student. And before you realize it, the Bible says there was, he was ten times better than the rest of the students. In obedience, we rise. In disobedience, we fall. Jonah wanted to run from God, but you can run, but you cannot hide. You can fool around in this church day after day and week of spiritual emphasis after another and you can run, you can do all you want to do but finally there is a reckoning with Jehovah. Finally Jesus will look you in the face and say my brother, who do you think you are? Come and tell me. You know he spoke to Job and told Job, Job, guard your loins now, speak to me now. If you think you are a man, speak to Jesus. Explain your whereabouts. You know, Zaya says, leave Ephraim alone, he's joined to his idols. A man called Esau, who walked away from Jesus, he said, he repented with bitterness, weeping in tears. But he found himself in the cold. In Acts 17, 30, in Acts 17, God says that in times of ignorance, God winked. But now he requires all men to come to repentance. Maybe you did not know that you shouldn't be cohabiting or sleeping around with that man, but now God holds you responsible. He says in James 4 verse 17, that to him that knoweth to do good and does it not to him, it is sin. Now the word has gone out. You now know that pornography will kill you, but Jesus has the power to save you. In times of ignorance, God winked. In times of ignorance, you blue ticked him, but he looked and said, no, he's not aware that I'm his friend. But now he calls all men to repentance. To him that knoweth to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. And so Jonah finds himself in unfamiliar territory where even the heathens know that you're a bad guy. Even those who don't love God know that you're the cause of their problems. There are some of us in this place today who will be a constant pain and agony to the world. There are people here who will be the stumbling block for many because they will refuse to listen to Jesus, but they know the truth. There are persons here who will block blessings from an entire community because they have refused to be the receptacles of truth. And so Jonah finds himself in this ship and these men began casting lots and they say, let's toss this one into the, into the, into the sea. And he's removed from the, from the ship and tossed into the sea. 
Waves are high. The light is flashing in the darkness and in the night. Winds are howling and the tempest is raging. And Jonah finds himself now in unfamiliar territory. He finds himself tossed in the sea so that the world can finally have peace. He finds himself in the grip of nature and nature's God. Be careful, my brothers. We are dealing with a consuming fire. We are dealing with a God who loves so much that his love can destroy. We are dealing with a God who says, I am a jealous God. The same love that can create, can love into existence, that same love, that same love that can love you into existence, that same love says our God is a consuming fire. You know, Jonah tried praying, but let me tell you, my friends, God will not honor prayers offered in disobedience. Don't waste your time beyond this meeting going to pray about a relationship which God already has put a star on saying it is marked for destruction. We don't waste your time. Go and read Joshua chapter 7 verse 10 and come and ask God for forgiveness. Don't pray so much about something which God already has expressed himself concerning. God has pronounced himself on your life. God has spoken about how he wants you to live your life in the balcony. God has spoken about your life. He has spoken about how you ought to conduct yourself. He has spoken about your friends. He's spoken about relationships. He's spoken about everything, the entire compass of life. Don't waste time praying about something God has explicitly revealed in his word. If God has said, thou shalt not steal, don't go kneeling down asking God again concerning his, his will concerning theft. If you have stolen, make amends with Jesus. If you are in adultery, don't go kneeling and saying, God, please surely, all my, it will not avail. If you are in adultery, ask God for forgiveness, come to Jesus. So God made, imagine because of Jonah's disobedience, God had to enter a contract with a creation. He had to speak to a fish. Jesus has to summon a fish, and a fish responded to the voice of Jesus. A fish. A fish, from wherever it was, a fish swam and came and received Jonah in the sea. And the prophet finds himself in unfamiliar territory. Slimy environments. Inside things that are rotting, things that are smelly, a prophet who should have been standing in Nineveh declaring the gospel of a crucified, risen, and soon returning savior. He finds himself now the subject of a fish. My friends, when I read this text, when Jonah was in the belly of the fish, in my mind, I saw God smiling. I said, Jonah, run now. Inside the belly of the fish. You know, he had used his feet. Now he finds himself in a place where he won't even stand. I said, Jonah, run now. Jonah finds himself crawling, whatever it is. And then he tells Jonah, Jonah, now smile now. Laugh now. Who is king? That when he opens his mouth to take a gulp of air, the thing that enters his nostrils is objectionable. Smile now. But God was not smiling because he is punishing Jonah. God was smiling because some of us, it will take a catastrophe for us to listen to Jesus. Some of us, it will take being expelled from campus to finally come and say, I am sorry, God, for the things I have done. Some of us, it will take a tragedy. It will take bad health. We will have to go to the doctor, and the doctor looks at you and says, I am sorry you've got this disease. And finally, you will turn to Jesus and say, God, I am sorry. But do we have to wait for a tragedy? Do you have to wait, my sister, for a situation that will bring you face to face with death for you to accept Jesus? 
Does somebody have to come and destroy your life and destroy your innocence for you to come to Jesus? But the truth is some of us will not go down on our knees until the burdens are too heavy on our shoulder. Some of us will not acknowledge God until God will have withdrawn all his providences around us and he will remove his hedge and everything else. Jonah, do not blue tick Jesus. As you sit down in your small little enclave talking about tribal arithmetic and thinking that the gospel and the, and the grace of God is limited to a certain people, Jonah, do not blue tick Jesus. As you sit down in a corner and God gives you a word and gives instructions, Listen to the voice of divinity. There is no peace to the wicked. The Lord says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Tani, tani, why will you die? But God is merciful. When Jonah cried, the Bible says in Jonah chapter 3 verse 1, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. This is a gospel of a second chance. This is a gospel of redemption. This is a gospel of restoration. This is a gospel of peace. The word of God has come a second time. The word of God has visited your mind a second time. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is a God of a second chance. But you don't have to wait for God to repeat himself. Listen to God the first time he speaks. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape? How, shall, how do you intend to escape from Jesus? My brother, as you struggle with those passions raging in your heart, how do you intend to escape? To where do you intend to escape? In Psalm 139, it says, if you go to the bottom of the sea, you will find a fish there that God has instructed. If you go to the, wherever it is you go, Jesus has birds ready and willing to do his will. You cannot hide from Jesus. If you have seen his text on WhatsApp, don't blue tick him and keep quiet. Respond to the voice of Jesus. The word of God came to Jonah a second time saying, arise. And that's my message to us. And also my final call. If you are here in God's church today, you have resisted the call of compassion. You have resisted the invitation of mercy. And God has come a second time to your street. And he's saying, arise. I'm giving you the opportunity to rise from your seat and come. If you have resisted the, the power and the invitation of God, you have resisted his ability and his power to translate you into the kingdom of his dear son. But today, again, he speaks to you and you know precisely the point upon which he's talking. Arise, come. Come. Jesus is calling and if this voice is to your heart, come. Don't wait for us to sing a song to accompany you. Come. It is the voice of Jesus to your soul. Come, don't bullshit Jesus. Is there such an one? God has spoken in your heart. There is a message God has shared with you in your heart. And you know the path of duty. You know the path of responsibility. And you want to give the life to Jesus. Or you want to recommit your life to Jesus. Come. Come quickly, Jonah. Come quickly, my friend. Jesus is ready and waiting. Come. If you're here, come. Don't harden your heart as you did in the days past. Come. Jesus is waiting to receive. Jesus is waiting to pardon. Come. Jonah, don't sit there and say, but preacher, you know they will see me going. Come in the name of Jesus. Come. But preacher, you know, you know this one of mine, I'm struggling. I will overcome it by myself. Come to Jesus. Arise. Are you here? Come. Come to Jesus if you hear that voice. 
Come to Jesus. Arise. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and calling for me. Why will you tarry when Jesus is pleading? Come, come. Let me have you pulling out of the congregation. Come, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus who alone can save. Come, Pep, tear away from the chains of wickedness. Come to Jesus. God bless you for coming. Come, come to Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Come, let the world look at you and mock you, but you come to Jesus. You know you can't be ruled forever by entertainment. You can't be ruled forever by Justin Bieber, but you can come to Jesus and Jesus will give you the strength. Come. Come. Come now while it is still day. Come. Is there anybody else who wants to come? God has sent a message. God has spoken in your heart. In the balcony, don't sit there thinking you're away from Jesus. Come. If God has invited you, come. Is there somebody else who is still battling the invitation of mass? If you are not coming, keep quiet, God's children. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. If you are not coming, give space to those who are coming. I have set my course on a narrow way. I have fixed my mind on another time. But today, if Jesus gives me the time and the opportunity, I will come to Jesus. Come. Is there anybody else who wants to tear away from the world and from sin and darkness? Come from darkness into light. Come, let Jesus make you right. Come. There is nothing to smile and to laugh about. If it is in your heart and God is calling you, come. Come. Is there anybody else? I invite all of us to rise on our feet. You know, I can see it's 602. But let me make a last ditch call for someone. Let me, let me do it for Jesus. Is there somebody who wants to come to Jesus this, this evening? Is there somebody who's remained there who should be here? Don't go back. Don't go back into the darkness. Come from darkness into light. Come and let Jesus make you right. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. Wonder working power. You can cut loose, you can be free. One minute. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else who wants to cut loose? You have received the message. In the WhatsApp group, you can see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and an entire confederacy of angels. And the message has come and the first thing you've done is to left the group. Are you battling conviction in your heart? Come. We are praying now. We are praying now. Come. Come. Even as we pray, come. Your life is in serious danger if you hear the voice of God and resist his influence. Your life is in serious danger if you hear the voice of God and reject his call. But there is hope for you if you on, if you on Christ your burdens cast. There is hope for you if you trust in Jesus. There is hope in Christ for you. Okay, we, we want to pray, but God has spoken to us. If you know there's something you need to leave, do not be there. We don't want you to be in the belly. We want you to go up and arise. 
So if you are there, please come as I do my prayer. I'm pleading with you. We want it to be good. Do not spurn the second chance. If you are still there, walk out of the crowd and come to Jesus. Even as I pray, do it. That person moving, just move and come. That movement need to come here. And even if you're up, I'm glad the first person that came moved from up. I thought he was going out. I saw him moving that door, and indeed he came up to here. So that will not give an excuse that you are up on the balcony. You can still move out of the balcony and come and encounter Jesus. Now as we pray, I pray that you will surrender to the Lord. Loving Father, we thank you. You have spoken so clearly. Your love has been explained so clearly. And Lord, we don't want to blue tick you. We want to surrender. You have given us time and a time and again. How I pray that we'll hear you talk to us. To release us from addiction. To keep us so that we'll be new in you. Lord, I pray for every member here that those who have not come to you and yet you're calling them never to have peace until they surrender to you, the author and the finisher of our faith and the provider of peace eternal. And now, Lord Father, even as we leave this place, walk and talk with us, bringing conviction and a transformation in this institution. May everything be done to give you honor and glory. We are prayed, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>